Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second like, is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who as at this time didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people, by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. If we could have somebody go out and... Uh, thank you. Oh, you did. Okay, thank you. The first lesson is from Acts chapter 2, from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak to one another in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this noise was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes, Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in other tongues 
the wonderful works of God. Here under the lesson. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Jesus said unto his disciples, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that, ye may, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye also shall live. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Judah saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I will go away, and will come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it came to pass, that when it shall come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you. in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. So, of course, there's not that much going on, but I think that um, if you're in the men's breakfast, we're going to be sending out an email this week. We'll let you know what, um, what we're going to be doing on the 7th, right? I think it's the 7th is the first Saturday of the month. The 6th? The 6th. Um, we are continuing... We're going to meet here at 8 o'clock for breakfast? No breakfast. No breakfast. No breakfast, and we'll maintain social distancing. Awesome. Okay, so we'll be doing that, and we're, we are reading, um, what book? I'm spacing out. <laughs> um, C.S. Lewis's, which one? Mere Christianity. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going through the list of uh, C.S. Lewis books in my head going, it's not that one, it's not that one, it's that one. So, okay, well, we'll look forward to that. Um, for those of you who don't know, we're doing an online study um, on um, the, the, the end times, the things of the end. It's really um, a study on apocalyptic literature, and so we're looking at Daniel, and we're looking at uh, Revelations, and we're, we're looking at how do we read these things, how are we meant to read them, and how can we read them and not misread them. And so we want to invite you to participate in that. And you know, that is done via Zoom. You know, there are ways to keep that secure. Um, we're maintaining that, so you're certainly welcome to um, uh, join in on that. And uh, we've had several of us here that have been doing it, and it's been good. I think last week it was really nice, right? So, um, so that's good. And, of course, we're still doing uh, evening prayer on Tuesdays, and you know, Wednesdays we're doing the Bible study, so Thursday's evening prayer again. And I think that's that, right? Anything else? Okay. So... I'm going to preach from here instead of way down there. So I don't know if we have to adjust the camera. Um, so I'm going to walk around a little bit from here. So, well, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Boy, if there's anything that we need right now in the world, it's peace. It's peace. It's unfortunate that as we celebrate Pentecost, even as we speak, you know, there have been fires lit and burning in our nation. There are riots and there are protests. There's violence. There's despair. And there's a longing for peace. And there's also raging anger. But the Holy Spirit, we have to remember, is poured out into a chaotic world. For example, we might remember the Tower of Babel, where the pride of man um, caused God to scatter all of the tongues of mankind. And the Spirit is sent again to reorganize their discordant cries into songs of praise. Jesus, on the night before he is handed over to suffering, handed over by the world to be unjustly charged and executed, tells his disciples he leaves them with peace. And it's not a worldly peace. The world doesn't know this peace. I think it's evident. And the world cannot know it and cannot give it. Jesus tells his disciples he's sending them the comforter, the Holy Spirit. And that spirit is the spirit of peace. It is a spirit of peace in the midst of a dangerous and chaotic world where fear and sin still exists. It's hard for us to overlook this. On the Feast of Pentecost, the disciples are gathered in the upper room, not far from the temple in Jerusalem. And there, on the Feast of Pentecost, the harvest of first fruits, they're gathered. And they've been meeting there, at first for fear of the Jews, they've been meeting there, praying, and Jesus has been making appearances and strengthening their hearts. 
over a course of 50 days, and they watch Jesus ascend into heaven, and he tells them, wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. They have been waiting and praying for 50 days, waiting for the promise of the Father. As they are gathered for church on a Sunday morning, the Spirit of God comes among them like a mighty rushing wind. It's as if the floodgates of heaven had finally burst open and a great dam had burst and the Spirit came rushing and pouring out upon all of the apostles. Roaring wind and fire. And it's maybe a little fitting that the fire alarm went off earlier. But may we have that kind of fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the kind of fire that kind of sets off, you know, warning signals all over the place. There's something different about this gathered people. They're filled with the Spirit of God. The gathered disciples begin to speak in unknown languages. And from the streets outside there, it's bustling with Jews, probably Jews who had come for the Passover, and not wanting to travel all the way back home, those who were probably among the most devout, and it says they were devout men, stayed in Jerusalem waiting for this feast, the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of First Fruits, and the feast which celebrated the giving of the law, the commandments. And here they are from the far-flung reaches of the Roman Empire, from places as far as North Africa, Iran, Rome, Greece, all of the different parts of the empire, they're all there. And they know what the languages from those places sound like. All of those different regions. And they hear them all in their own tongues. And in hearing the gospel in every language, it foreshadows that the Spirit has come upon all of the people of the world to shed light upon all of the people of the world. But those still in the world system can't see it or receive it, Jesus says. In 14, verse 15, he says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The world neither sees him or knows him. It doesn't know this spirit. It doesn't know Christ. It doesn't know God. That's what Jesus is talking about when he's saying the world. He's not talking about all of the peoples that the spirit is being sent to. After all, that's prefiguring the gospel going out to every people. God is not rejecting people. But what it's talking about is that world system that rejects the spirit and rejects God. The world neither sees him, nor knows him, nor loves him. A world that cannot perceive him, cannot know him, and therefore cannot love him, can it? A world that cannot love God, cannot possess the Holy Spirit. The Trinity, we know, exists in a, in a perpetual state of co-eternal love. And with that love, there's peace and there's comfort. There's nothing more comforting and peaceful than being among the people who are closest to you, who you love, and you know they love you. And this is the Trinity, a picture of the Trinity. There is nothing but love among the Trinity. And where there's love, there's peace and there's comfort. The Helper is the Spirit, and the Spirit and the Son and the Father are intertwined and interpenetrated by that same love. There's no giving of the Spirit where there is no love, Jesus says. This love is self-abandoning. It's a love that surrenders the self to others. And so the world cannot see, receive the Comforter because it's unwilling to abandon itself to God. And we're unwilling to abandon ourselves in love for one another. And this is the cause of chaos in the world. And we too, if we are unwilling to abandon ourselves for God, we live also in inner chaos and turmoil, longing for peace, but instead 
we have an ache of not being able to find it. The world can't give this peace because the world doesn't have it. It simply does not possess it. And no one who loves the world can exist in that love that the Trinity has. Peace is with that love. Comfort is there. Try as we may to grope in the dark, there is no peace until we choose to turn from our sins and obey his commandments. And while it's true that we're all created in God's image and we're all God's children, the fact of the matter is that we are not all surrendered to God. Jesus, in the passage that we read today, tells us that the world simply cannot receive the Spirit because the world does not love Him, and not loving Him, it cannot see Him. So we're all created in the image of God. We're all God's children. But there's an estrangement between us and God. We are somehow cut off from that relationship in the Trinity. And love invites us into that. The Spirit is promised, according to the words of Jesus, to those who love Him, not merely those who believe in Him. Belief is a term that we use really loosely today, right? Such that it really doesn't bear much weight. Sure, I believe in God. I believe in this. I believe in that. You can believe in fairies, but you're not going to entrust your life to any of them. I believe in fairies. You ever encounter that, you know? There was a thing on the internet for a while where people were pushing this idea that fairies really existed. It's kind of like flat earth theory. <laughs> In spite of all the evidence, I believe that the world is flat. Right? Belief is a term that we throw around all of the time, and we throw it around about God. You can believe in medicine and not trust a flu shot. Right? You can say that you believe in God and not really entrust yourself to God. These are different things. You can't truly say that you believe in God and not love him. Jesus promises peace to those who love him. Do you believe the disciples merely believed and didn't love him? Can you imagine that we, he would have appeared to them after his crucifixion and resurrection on those occasions? and they would have given him merely mental affirmation? Oh, Jesus, you are, you are after all risen. Wow, that's awesome. Good luck with that. I, mean, I hear you're ascending to the Father. Put in a good word for me. I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing, though, just so you know. No, of course not. When Jesus appears behind those closed and locked doors where they had been hiding for fear of the Jews... He lifts the fear from their hearts and he, and he gives them peace. He says, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Note, the love that they had for their teacher was only magnified into a love of pure devotion fitting only for God. Very God of very God. But we have to ask ourselves, what do we give him? Do we love him? Do we love his commandments? What do we give him? How much time? How much prayer? How much are we giving ourselves to him? Perhaps the measure of peace we enjoy is according to the amount of ourselves that we give to him. And if I withhold myself, then there is withheld from me a certain measure of peace. Jesus says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. Not as the world gives, but a real peace that's lasting and abiding, but that's predicated upon loving God and knowing his love for us. Jesus promises peace, like I said, not as the world gives. The world in its dark night only howls and cry, gives cries of despair. It cries out for justice, and peace it can never know apart from this love. The Spirit is given in tongues of fire so that the church would bring a lighted torch to the world and light the way of peace. But unfortunately, it seems that we often hide that light under a bushel, loving everything else, every distraction, every pleasure, every lie, every sorrow, every loss, every offense, 
every token idol, our light has grown dim until it's barely a light at all. And the world is left groping in the dark. Is it any wonder there's so little peace in the world? Jesus promises the spirit of truth and of comfort. It is a truth and comfort the world cannot find. The world has surrendered truth for the sake of fleeting comfort that leaves the soul without peace. There's a comfort that comes from knowing the truth, isn't there? Even when the truth hurts, there's comfort in it. I would rather be wounded by the truth a thousand times. I would rather have somebody come and knock me over the head with the truth and say, you need to cut that out, than to remain in those things that keep me without peace. Offend me, Holy Spirit, with thy truth. Offend me. Offend me and disturb my peace. O spirit of truth, because it's a false peace. It's the peace of the world. It's a peace not predicated on truth, but lies to keep me comfortable without ever having to change. O spirit of truth, disturb my peace so that I might know true comfort and true peace. In the beginning, you remember the story in Genesis, in the beginning, the earth was formless and void. We could say, aptly so, it was in chaos. And the spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. So on Pentecost, the spirit comes again into a chaotic world and into our chaotic hearts. A mighty wind and fire of love upon mankind to bring comfort and peace. May the Spirit fall upon us as it did on them, and may the world be lighted with tongues of fire, and the rushing wind of peace will overtake us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. While we have time, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them that are of the household of the faith. I would remind you that there are offering bowls on each side, so we're not going to go down each aisle. Uh, you can, after you receive communion, um, place your offerings there if you like, or at the end of the service as well.
Receive, O Holy Trinity, this oblation which we offer unto thee in memory of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension of Jesus Christ our Lord, and in honor of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, of Blessed John the Baptist, of the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, that it may avail them to their honor and us to our salvation, and may they whose memory we celebrate on earth vouchsafe to intercede for us in heaven through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept these, our alms and oblations, and to receive these, our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, addiction, persecution, or any other adversity, I invite you to lift up by name those you bear upon your heart. We pray for the family of George Floyd. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants to part of this life and thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent ye of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth, in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession before Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Lord Jesus Christ saith to all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up for the Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose most true promise the Holy Spirit came down as at this time from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, giving them boldness with fervent zeal, constantly to preach the gospel unto all nations, whereby we have been brought out of darkness and error into the clear light and true knowledge of thee and of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, be unto the almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institute and in this holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured to us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we often present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say. Safe from all disquietude through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth God, world without end. Amen. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. May this mingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to bear us who partake thereof unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. not presume to come to this, thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. I will receive the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. I shall call upon the name of the Lord, and so shall it be said. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ broken for me, forgive my family and soul. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. shall be receiving in one kind only. Christ broken for thee. The body of Christ broken for thee. The body of Christ broken for thee. The body of Christ broken for thee. The communion in him two o four in two o four. The body of Christ broken for thee. Almighty God bless. 
bless you and watch over you and keep you. Almighty God, bless you and preserve you in peace. For the body of Christ broken for thee. 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 Christ broken for thee. The body of Christ broken for thee. The body of Christ broken for thee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Cleanse our hearts, O Lord, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and make them fruitful by the inward sprinkling of the dew of His grace through the Father and the Son in the unity of the same Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries. With the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Thanks. Thanks be to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to his disciples, Remain in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that you pour upon us all of thy graces. Pour upon us, Lord, the fire of thy Holy Spirit. Inspire within us a deep and true love and devotion for your holy name. Inspire us, Almighty God, with zeal for your holy name and zeal for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Inspire us, Lord God, and endue us with power that we might be witnesses to our neighbors, our friends, our community, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.